All right, it's time to bring in our guest camp counselor today, or should I say our camp director. Everyone, welcome, Miss Rachel Ray. Hi, Rach. Hi, Emily. I can talk. Woo! Thank you, Kathy. Uh, uh, welcome, everybody. This is amazing. As of today, I just want you guys to know, as of today, we have 10,000 registrants for this class. Yes, thank you, Zoom, for giving us your max. But for all of our classes in total over the next 16 days, we have over 85,000 registrants. And between our optional online donations and our sponsors, we've raised $320,000, woohoo, for Boys and Girls Club. And we have a brand new scholarship fund that's amazing. And I want to thank, because they didn't ask me to, I want to thank our sponsors because they gave us a whole lot of money just to support kids in need and to encourage education. These are some good guys and good women running some great companies. So thank you to Varela, our beautiful pasta sponsors, Bird's Eye, keep us eating veggies, eating from the freezer, delicious. Duncan Hines, helping everybody bake. Potsandpans.com, they help make my pots and pans too, same company. Ready Whip, that's fabulous. Whipped cream, really? Qua? in a can. Yes, sir. Of course. Uh, shipped so people can cook from home together. Um, and classic. Oh, I even have some pickles here today. Didn't ask me to. This happened to happen. Some classic pickles. So let me say just a couple things before we get cooking. The first thing we're going to do is make chicken paillard. Chicken paillard means pounded out chicken, and we're going to use that as pizza crust, so it's going to be gluten-free. If you wanted to make a vegetarian version, well, you know what's long and oval, kind of like flatbread or pounded out chicken? A giant plank of eggplant. We could use that. And the grocery stores are full of gluten-free made breads and flatbreads, so we could use those too. Um, but I wanted to say that the most important skill I learned in life when I was a kid, and I kind of always hated it when people would call me a kid. It just felt like a little like, oh, the kid, kid. But now I wish people would call me the kid because I'm an old lady. <laughs> anyway, when I was a kid, the number one thing I was most proud of was learning how to read. My grandpa taught me how to read. He was an Italian immigrant. He came here when he was just a kid. He was literally not even 14 years old when he came to America. And he was very proud that he learned how to read. The first book I loved as a little girl is the one I'm holding in my hand. It's called The Casual Observer. It's about a little girl who learns about her world by just asking questions. Animals, people, and just being curious. Reading is the most important skill all of us can have. It's a gift because it can show you any place in the world you've never been, and it can give you any skill that you want. It can take you anywhere in your life and in your imagination and in your soul. This matters most. The second thing next to reading that changed my entire life, no matter what I would grow up to be, even if I grew up to be a rocket scientist or a doctor, no matter what I would be, the most important thing I could learn is to cook. When we learn to cook, we can provide for ourselves with not a lot of money because we know how to take dry things or fresh things and use all of them. And we have the skills to cook for ourselves and the people we love so we can always provide for one another and ourselves. That's a big, big deal gives you a huge sense of self-esteem and it makes you feel safe and secure. Cooking can also take you, just like books, to any place you have never been. It can help you understand what the lives are like for people that live on the other side of the world or people that lived in other times throughout history. It's like a time machine. And food always brings us together, especially when we cook good food that everybody wants to eat. Today, I'm just gonna show you guys fun food and a couple of simple skills that I think everybody will enjoy having. The whole family can join in, of course, and I hope that we have not excluded moms, dads, cousins, grownups from this. 
yeah, this is cooking camp, but everybody can, can learn every day. I'm 52. I know, I know that sounds super old <laughs> if you're under 20. But once you get to be 52, believe me, you're going to still feel the same inside. So no matter what age you are, it's always fun to have fun with food. And that's the number one lesson in the kitchen. Take the food seriously and respect it. Don't take yourself too seriously. Not everything's going to come out perfect. Who cares? It'll probably still taste pretty good. And you tried. You made something with love, with your hands, that appeals to all of your senses. Because when we cook, we smell things, we see new things, and we see things change before our eyes. It's literally a magic act. So today's magic act is very simple, and we're going to do it two ways. We're going to make chicken pizza, and the reason I put it into quotes is that the pizza crust isn't crust at all. It's the chicken itself. As I said, if we wanted a vegetarian option, we could use an eggplant plank, right? A slab of eggplant cut long ways. Or a beautiful center cut of a giant head of cauliflower. Delicious, also. So we've got the oven getting super hot. We have a large skillet, the biggest you can find in your kitchen, so that we can make our crust, or the eggplant, or the cauliflower, nice and brown. We gotta get the crust a little bit cooked before we finish it in the oven. So we're going to make a pie art. That means pounding something out nice and thin. And the easiest way to do that is to use your noodle and take a shortcut. So my husband, John, is gonna come around here so you guys can see what I've set up. I've got some pieces of chicken breast. I don't know why. But the ones you buy in the store order online from home, they come in a package and they always send you three. They don't know why. Most people cook two things or four things, but for some reason, whenever you buy packaged chicken, it's three. So I have three pieces here. Now this one has already been butterfly or cut open and pounded out. This one is almost there. He's been cut open, but not it with a mallet yet okay and this one we still need to cut open so here's a piece of boneless skinless chicken our knife is very sharp we always treat the knife with respect and it's an extension of our arm we hold it as we would all the fingers wrapped around as we would almost like a baseball bat you choke way up when you want more control when we're cutting meats Sometimes we can put our finger up here, but most always in the kitchen for safety, we want to put as much control on the bat as if you were playing baseball as you want on a knife, okay? And we're going to put one hand gently on top of chicken, and we start to cut into the meat and across, almost like we're opening up a magazine or a book right in the middle. And there we have a butterfly. See, we didn't cut all the way through. We took the larger side of the chicken breast, the lobe, the top of the chicken, and we cut into it and opened it like the book, so we cut across. See? Now, say this got cut down the middle. So what? You're gonna have some skinny little pizzas. Who cares? No big deal, it's still gonna taste good. So this is a skill that anytime we're learning something new, look the first time you ride a bike, you fall off, right? You brush yourself off and you get back on. It's not a big deal. It's still gonna taste good. It's just food. Food's supposed to be fun. Okay, now we're gonna pound something out with a mallet. This is a mallet, any heavy thing that's flat on the bottom. Don't go after brother, sister, or your family member <laughs> friends with this. It's very heavy and it can hurt, okay? What we're trying to do is make things even in thickness. When we're cooking, it's a lot about balance of flavor and even, even shapes and sizes for cooking time. We want everything to be the even thickness and the even shape and the even size to everything else in the pan so that everything cooks the same amount of time. 
whether we're cutting up potatoes for mashed potatoes and putting them in water to boil, or whether we're making chicken cutlets. And you see that when we're pounding, it's loud. It gets kind of annoying, doesn't it? But we're hitting it evenly and flat and pulling it towards us or away from us. So we can pull towards or we can push away, but we're trying to do it evenly. Strong as you drop down with your hand, but nice and even. Don't force it. You don't want to tear it. But again, if you do and it's not perfect, it's still going to taste great. No worries. Okay. Now, once we cut chicken or raw meat, we plastic fork. My counter is a giant cutting board. I can cut anything on here. When we're dealing with meat or fish, raw things, we try and keep them on a separate board that we can put to the dishwasher and get super duper clean at high temp or put under super hot water, with lots of soap, put lots of salt and lemon juice on, okay? So we have to be able to clean this really, really well. So I'm gonna put him off to the side. I'm gonna wash my hands and the instruments I pulled with my pinky, didn't touch nothing. And I'm going to turn the water on as hot as I can stand it. Goodness. And we're going to wash these items. And we're going to turn up the heat on the skillet for our chicken pyards. And if we touch that chicken again, it's fine, but we have to keep washing our hands. Just like we're doing now, we have to keep washing our hands every time we touch it. Okay? Now we're gonna get the skillet hot. And we also have a pan ready to go in the oven. And we preheated our oven to 450 degrees to melt the cheese. We always cook real pizza made on bread and crust at super high temperatures. So we're gonna cook this pizza made on a chicken at a super high temperature too. So we took care of this side of the chicken, right? But we didn't season it. So now we're gonna season from above. Why do we season from way above? I'm sure lots of folks can guess. <laughs> so that we can see where the seasoning's going, of course, and how much we're seasoning. There we go. So once we get the chicken seasoned, now we can put it in the pan with a little bit of oil. Now look at the oil I have here. This is olive oil. I keep it in a, in a cruet, this is called. And I keep olive oil in here to protect it from sunlight so that it stays fresher longer. This bottle is dark, dark, dark to do the same thing to protect super fruity extra virgin olive oil from getting too hot or getting too much sun. This is called high temperature oil. And that's because we can see through it. When oil is light in color and light in flavor, that means we can cook at higher temperatures with it. So we're gonna put a little bit of high temperature oil into the pan, just a drizzle. This one's made from safflowers. It can also be made from peanuts, lots of things. There's uh, grape seeds, lots of high temperature oils. So we're going to take that and swish it around our biggest pan that we have. Just a little bit. You can also use non-aerosol cooking spray to be even lighter in the pan, okay? And then we're going to take the pieces of chicken and put them seasoned side down. Why did we do that? Well, so we can season the other side too, yeah. Okay, so now over medium-high heat, here's our flame. We're cooking our chicken pizza bottles. And they're small. These are individual chicken pizzas. And we can make these for lunch or for dinner. That's what's nice about these. Okay, now we're going to move on to making the barbecue sauce. I should also explain next to the chicken, look what we have here, guys. 
We also have some non bread. That's yogurt flatbread, tangy yogurt flatbread. That is uh, a roasted garlic flavor. You buy it right in the regular grocery store or you can order it online. <clears throat> and that's if you want to make an even faster chicken pizza. We're going to use our own homemade barbecue sauce and we're going to put it on bread and melt cheese on it. So that'll be more traditional flat bread pizza. So really nice tip. Every time you want to cook, we should put away everything clean. Like I have my herbs and my veggies here. When we come home from the grocery store with mom, dad, or the family of your neighbors, or moms and dads, if you're watching, we put away everything clean and ready to use so that we cook more and it's easier the night we want to cook. <clears throat> so I'm going to turn on, <coughs> excuse me, I drink my iced coffee. <coughs> my turn a little bit. All right, so we're going to turn on a small skillet to make our own homemade barbecue sauce. Now, why would you make barbecue sauce when they sell it in jars right at the grocery store? Well, because a lot of the things that are in barbecue sauce, you already spend money on as a family. You guys already own most of the stuff that we make barbecue sauce from. So why would you want to buy more of something you can make? Now we're going to chop an onion. Do you see what I did here? Whenever we put the onion away, we can take the skin off and we cut it in half, but always leave this end on. It looks like the funny uh, toupee, the hairy hat. You leave the hair on the onion. That's the root end. That keeps the onion together. And we slice it one way, and then we turn it sideways and slice it the other way. And we always keep our fingers curled under, just like the paw of a cat. And we always work with a nice sharp knife. And we always put the knife tilted just a tiny bit away from us so it can't hit us. It can only hit our knuckles. Now, of course, a goof like me that always talks with her hands and has her hands moving in and out and in and out. <clears throat> my very first day at Food Network, I cut my hand. Cut this whole finger. Yeah, tip of it, right off. They literally glued it back on. You know how I did that? Talking with my hands and waving a knife around. I wasn't even chopping anything. Lose off. <laughs> hey, Rach. Yeah. A couple people asking, um, in particular, Ken Lee, thanks for the good question, asking if they don't have a wire rack for their baking sheet. Oh, no big deal. Put parchment paper on it. Oh. No, no big deal. Just put parchment paper on it. It'll be fine just right on the baking sheet. Thanks, Ken Lee. You're the one, Kathy's the one, uh, I was talking to Kathy on the phone, he typed in the recipe. You don't, it doesn't matter if you have a wire wrap. I put one in there so that um, heat can circulate around anything I put in the oven, but it's not that important. Cool. Now we're gonna turn our chicken over. See how quickly our little chicken pizza crust cooked? We've got like two minutes. Okay, now let's get our sauce going. Now I'm going to use a little bit of my olive oil. What One temperature? The pan is about a tablespoon, but you can use any of these oils that you have, except this super fancy extra virgin, because that the green olive oil is for salad dressings and dipping veggies and things. It's because you can't cook at very high heat. So that's why. Excellent. And what temperature should the pan be, Rach? About medium or so? You, you have to turn the sound up, John. I can't hear Kathy. Should, should that pan... And John will relay it. Should that pan be at about medium for the barbecue sauce? Um, it's a little above medium. It's a, just a little above medium. Perfect. Now, when we add salt, liquid comes out of anything. So what we want the onion and garlic to do for our barbecue sauce is literally sweat. What does that mean? Just like you sweat when you run, water comes out of your body because you are exhausting your energy. Well, we're breaking down the onions and the garlic and some of their flavor is coming out because we added the salt and salt draws out liquid. So the way we make that a little faster, there's two things we can do. We can put a lid on it and shake it a little bit every once in a while. 
and help it sweat like you're in a sauna. Maybe some of you guys have been in a sauna in a little room with a lot of steam, right? Oh boy, do you sweat. <laughs> or you can even add another trick, a little bit of water and everything runs out even quicker. So we're gonna let that sweat and we're gonna take our first little individual chicken pizza shells and put them on our baking sheet. Again, you could put them right on parchment paper or right on a nonstick baking sheet, you're fine. Okay? Now, hey, Rach. On this other baking sheet, we're gonna do the second type of pizza, which is with the non breads. And I just followed the package directions. I got the pan nice and hot over medium high heat. I added a touch of water. I browned the bread. I flipped it over. I added a little spray of oil or brush of butter. And you just crisp them on one side. Don't crisp the bottom yet because they're gonna go in the oven. So I'm gonna put our bread pizza on one tray and our chicken mini pizzas on the other tray. Hey, yes. Rach. Yes. Do you have a personal favorite style of barbecue sauce? Like sweet or spicy or mustardy or vinegary? This is my basic and I make all kinds. As with all food, the more we learn and explore food, different styles of barbecue sauce and rubs. Yeah. My styles of rubs from all over the world are delicious and very different. This is just something very basic that we can make probably from the stuff we already have in the refrigerator right this minute. Like so I bet a lot of people had to call shift to get a lot of this stuff. Yeah, good call. Let's do a fun, we, we could do a quick fun poll here, everybody. Check out your screen. We wanna know if you have a favorite barbecue sauce, sweet, spicy, mustard, vinegary. Click that button, thousand, oh, they're already coming in the polls. <laughs> Wait, we put a, wait, we wait. Put a, let's go back to the cooking class part. I have so right. many things to say. Okay, now, this is a really, really big one. There is a very special cook. Um, she's not with us anymore, but I love reading about her, and her name was Marcella Hazan. Marcella Hazan said that for a cook to measure was like per, putting a bird in a cage. So when I cook, I usually don't measure unless I'm baking. Baking is a little bit more of a science and we have to be more careful with our measurements. When we're cooking, we can be a little more loosey-goosey. But I wanna show you guys a very important tool if you're just starting to cook in the kitchen. Here's a measuring cup filled with tomato sauce, okay? We need this for our barbecue. This is one cup. What I want you to do is put it into a measure so you see what that looks like when you put it into a bowl. Now there is no more measuring cup, but I know how much fluid, liquid, or in this case, tomato sauce, looks to my eyes to be about one cup, okay? Or an eight ounce can. Now we're going to take I thought we would. Where did it go? Do you see the, the measuring spoon that was right there? Hmm. Well, there was, oh, it's right here. Here we go. <laughs> I'm over prepared, sorry. Now I want you to do the same thing with a tablespoon. We're gonna use three tablespoons of vinegar. This is apple cider vinegar. You can use wine vinegar if you don't have apple cider. And we're, when we add, we are measuring, but we're also looking with our eyes to see, oh, it's about that much. Then I want you to try something. I want you to see with your eyes, not the measuring spoon, if you can add about the same amount of Worcestershire sauce. See, because Worcestershire is much darker, you can see where it goes. That's about three tablespoons. And then we're going to add a little bit of sugar. This is light brown sugar. Okay, that means it's, start, it's gonna have a slightly caramel flavor to it. Color equals flavor. So we're gonna add a little bit of sugar and it's all about the same amount. Three, three, three. Three tablespoons, three tablespoons, three tablespoons. About, okay? So that's an experiment to learn to trust your eyes when you're in the kitchen. Then we're gonna add two big spoonfuls 
or about two tablespoons of your favorite kind of mustard. That might be Dijon. This mustard is from Canada, from Coslix, and it's called uh, market mustard. I love this mustard. It's delicious. Oh, look, some spilled. Mmm. <laughs> Yum. Delicious mustard. And then we're going to whisk that together. And now look what's going to happen. We're going to add that to our skillet with the onions and garlic and mix it all together and let that bubble up together and cook together over lower heat for a few minutes. Hey, Rach, did the chicken be fully cooked when you put it on the baking sheet? Doesn't matter. It's going to a 450 degree oven. It's very thin because you pounded it. Yeah. Chances are it's perfectly fine, especially once it sets there for two minutes, but you're putting it into a 450 oven. And that's called carry over cooking. Awesome. When we start something on a stove and finish it in the oven, it continues to cook. So that's called carry over because we're carrying over the cooking process. Here's some barbecue I already made. So I'm going to turn this one up because this is going to be for our rotisserie chicken. Aha, I have another chicken to show you. And a different type of pizza. This is for non-pizza. So this one is still cooking. See, it's just bubbling right now. This one is fully cooked. Let's go top our individual pizzas. So there'll be more sauce to pass at the table. I put a little bit of parchment paper on the bottom of the tray, just so it'll be easier to clean the tray. It won't get all sticky. It'll be easier to do the job of the dishes. Everybody knows that tour, right? That was my first job, dish machine operator at the Howard Johnson. Woo, that's a hard job. Okay, so there's our sauce all over our chicken pizzas and a little bit extra to pass at the table or even use with our vegetable sticks. Now, we're going to make our cheese blend. Now, here you can go crazy anything you want because we're making a fusion meal of different types and ideas of food all mixed together. So we're taking the idea of barbecue chicken and we're taking the idea of pizza and we're mashing it together. So we can use something that's very traditional when we make pizzas. What cheese do we normally see on a pizza? Mozzarella? I think so. So we can take something like mozzarella and add something a little crazy. Oh, John's stealing some. <laughs> we can add Mexican cheese. If you like it spicy, maybe you want some pepper jack. Or maybe you want some mozzarella mixed with regular jack if you don't like things too spicy. And then we're going to get really nuts. Because it's barbecue, we're going to add a smoky flavor. It's not bacon, it's smoked cheese. The reason bacon and turkey bacon taste smoky is because they put it in a smoker. So they take all different flavors of wood and styles of charcoal and they smoke things at different temperatures and it gives them this delicious extra layer of flavor. So now we're going to add smoked cheese. You can use smoked Gouda. You can use smoked cheddar. So now we're gonna add in a little bit of that smoky flavor too. What? What is going on with this cheese mixture? A lot. Okay, <laughs> so I'm quicker than John. He's not keeping up with me here. Uh -huh. All right, there we go. So now we got some cheese on top. The pizza crust isn't an English muffin. That's not pizza dough. That's not a pita. That's chicken. High protein, big flavor, yum, yum, yum. Homemade barbecue sauce for many of the ingredients we already have in our refrigerator. So using up money we've already spent as a family. Now, for the other two pizzas. Speaking of the kind of barbecue sauce people like. If you like it hot, as I do, as John does, since Me we too. were kids, since we were kids, you can add some hot sauce, a milder hot sauce, like this, this style, Frank's Red Hot, that's a cayenne pepper sauce, or also from Louisiana, 
a Tabasco sauce. This one's chipotle. That means it's gonna be smoky and extra spicy. So for our other two pizzas, we're making them extra spicy. Boom. Okay. These guys can go in. John, you're gonna be the, the oven guy. There you go. John's walking to the oven. He's putting down the big camera. Here I am on the stove. All right. Now, for the bread pizzas, here we go. We've got our super spicy homemade stovetop barbecue sauce. This is a rotisserie chicken from the grocery store. All I did was cut it up. Here's half of the chicken. Here's the other half. I just pulled it into pieces. That's all I did. I took away the bones and the skin and I pulled it into bite-sized pieces. And now we're gonna slather it with our own stovetop homemade sauce. And that's it. We didn't have to buy barbecue sauce and we could put this on a roll with some pickles and some shredded cabbage or lettuce and make a nice sandwich. Or we can take that chicken and tap some garlic naan bread. Yum. Oh, wow. Wow, is that gonna be good? And remember, naan bread is tangy because it has yogurt in it. So if you guys love yogurt, you're definitely gonna like naan bread. It's delicious. It's beautiful flatbreads. Now, what are we gonna, what are we gonna put on top of that? Let me guess. Cheese! Cheese. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> cheese! And a piece of that cheese. Well, you certainly can have pizza without cheese. That's not true. Okay. Technically, pizza without cheese leans more into the world of focaccia, but okay. <laughs> they're delicious cheese pizzas, and they're delicious pizzas without cheese. My mom orders pizza without cheese all the time. Just with tomato sauce, oregano, and a fat drizzle of olive oil on top. It exists, trust me. Okay, so now I'm going to get some of this out of the way. John's going to get those pizzas in the oven. Put that thing on the stand over there because we're going to talk about top. Can you set it up nice, put it up, there you go, so they can see the counter. Okay, so now we're going to talk about toppings. And the other one's probably done, honey. You can put it on this stove top when it is, because you're just melting cheese. Great. you said high temp oven. Is yours at like 450 or so? 450, yep. It's on the instructions, Cap, for Excellent. today's Excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> John just burnt himself. When you go to take things in and out of the oven, make sure you have your popcorns, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now because this is fusion or a couple different ideas about food all mixed together, kind of like mashups with music, uh, you know, like if, if you have a really good DJ at the turntable and he mashes up different songs, but they sound great together, it's kind of like that. It's all these fun ideas. So now we're going to take, well, John left it over here. Hang on, let me grab it. Now we're going to take our pizzas and we're going to top them in different ways. So we have at our disposal hot or sweet mm. pickled jalapenos, because that's delicious and barbecue. We have sweet or dill pickles. We have cilantro that you have more with barbecue sauces or Tex-Mex food or South American food or Mexican food. We have basil, which I'm sure you've seen on or with pizzas. And we have scallions or beautiful green onions. So we have lots of different options for our toppings. Look at that. I made a rhyme and I wasn't even trying. <laughs> Okay, and I have a couple of giant cutting boards to serve pizza on. So let's do one to highlight the mozzarella with a little torn basil on top. Delicious. Fine. And maybe a little green onion goes with that one. Mm. Grabbing a knife. And we're gonna top that with a little green onion and basil. 
and uh, maybe a hot pickle cover because the basil is sweet and our sauce, our barbecue sauce is kind of both. A little bit sweet and a little bit hot. Where's my little baby forks? My baby forks for pickled things. Okay. There we go. All right. Somebody's literally knocking at the back door. That hardly ever happens. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start lining these up on, on cutting board here. Okay, then next. I'm salivating, I'm so hungry. I know, they, they're they fun, they're so fun, and you can eat them for, for lunch or dinner. I know, and, fun. and your barbecue sauce, I've made it like literally a hundred times. It's my favorite barbecue sauce ever. So easy. John, are the, are the bread ones okay? Go look at them, don't burn them. Who was at the back door? John has very strict duties, everybody. Oh, someone was looking for a different address. <clears throat> I hope they find it. Or they smelled the barbecue sauce. Yeah, I think they just want free pizza. <laughs> All right, so these two we're gonna do more Mexican style. Uh, and we're going to add, I, I should say Tex-Mex. We're going to add cilantro, green onion, and some pickles. Yeah. I'm going to do dill pickles on one and some sweet pickles on the other. Yum, yum, yum. You're missing a lot, honey. <laughs> Running good, around. John. Dill pickles on one and sweet pickles on the other. Oh, my gosh. I know. It's a lot. I couldn't decide, so I just decided to show everybody everything. I'm on Team Rage right now. <laughs> so... Here we go with our Tex-Mex. There's the mild and the hot for the Tex-Mex. There's the more time with the basil all on one tray. I'm gonna bring them around here. This is where we have our cut veggies. Instead of making a dinner salad, we just did some nice veggie sticks. Rainbow carrots, some celery, a big beautiful bell pepper from the garden. So we have some nice veggies. And I'm gonna check on the other pizza real quick. Excellent. Kathy, here are the questions. We're going to run out of time and I can't answer it. No, you're good. While you're checking, let's give a quick shout out. So as we mentioned, we have Boys and Girls Clubs of America where, um, as a beneficiary. And we want to give a special shout out today to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Tarrant County, Texas. Big high five to you all for cooking along with us and for helping to feed people in need in your community. This club has served over 122,000 meals to people in need since March. Thank you all. Jose Andres, our friend Jose, would love to hear that. Yes, absolutely. Would you love that? Absolutely. It shout out to cool. shout out to Will. Passion. Will's outside of Jacksonville, Florida. Shout out to Will and all of his friends cooking along. And and uh, Willow and Leif in Deerfield, Illinois. Shout out to you two for cooking along, brothers and sisters. Beautiful. And there's our basil topped uh, roasted garlic pizzas. Roasted garlic and bread pizzas. Where do I keep putting my spatula? You know, as my mama always said, if my head wasn't attached, <laughs> <laughs> I'd lose it. Okay, there's our garlic non flatbread pizzas. Let's go look at the whole shebang all together here. Shout out to Eden cooking in Toronto. Okay. Hi, Eden. There we go. There's our fresh veggies. Our pizza's two ways, and you might be saying, hey, Rach, I think you said that there was going to be a dessert today. Yeah. Yeah. And what goes really well with barbecue? Oh, maybe mm. some bear with shortcake? Uh, guess who's going to be making the shortcake? Hey, Kathy, do you know anything about shortcake? I don't know anything about shortcake, but I know there's a baker in your family. Yeah, there is. There she is. <clears throat> um, so I just want to say I'm very excited about the next 16 days, the next 15 days, because today is our first day. Uh, thank you to all of our sponsors. Thank you most of all to you guys for joining us. Um, home could be as much uh, of an adventure as being outside. It really can. And I'm glad you're going to have adventures with all of my friends, cooking yourselves around the world and around our country, and sharing with people from all over the world. It means a lot to me that you're here. 
I really appreciate you for joining us. And I really appreciate my sister. Uh, she is the baker in the family. I am not as good a baker um, as I am a cook. I, I'm, I'm a good cook. Maria is an amazing baker and she's gonna show you something simple today that everybody can make a little later or tonight for dessert to go with any of these recipes. Um, be safe, be well, be respectful and mindful of each other and keep each other well fed. Until next time, I'm back on August 14th. Bobby Flay is cooking with you tomorrow, making the real deal macaroni and cheese. Yes. Uh, yes. And here is my beautiful sister Maria showing you guys a few new things you might even not know about berry shortcake. Bye, everybody. Hi, Maria. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can. Oh, okay. Good, good. No one's going to want dessert after that. That's, and I'm hoping I get some. So <laughs> that looked really, really, really good. I'm really hungry now. Um, okay, very, very short cake. Um, first thing I did was put a bowl and a whisk in the freezer, and there's heavy cream cold in the refrigerator. I have some sugar for the whipped cream that will make in a few. I have ice cream. I have assorted berries. I have, uh, what, with my cardamom and mint and my water, I have biscuits, softened butter, and granulated sugar. The first thing you want to do is get the berries going. You wash and dry all of your berries. I have strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, blueberries. The strawberries are hulled and halved. You're going to take about a third of your fruit. You're going to put it in a saucepan. Add your water. Cardamom and mint. And you're going to put it on the stove uncovered on high. It will take literally like 10 seconds for the water to come to a boil. As soon as the water comes to a boil, cover it, reduce the heat to medium, three minutes only. You're forced macerating or getting those juices out of the fruit fast. Second the fruit is cooked, move the cooked fruit to a bowl. It's gonna look like that. I don't know if you can see that. It's gonna look like that. You must cool this to room temperature before adding the other fruit. That's going to take about 15 minutes. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to put the fruit in. And toss. Going to toss that together. Get all the juice covering all the berries. Get them really coated so they continue to macerate. They'll give up more juice in the next few minutes. Set it aside. Now we're going to move on to making some whipped cream. Cold, cold, cold. You need a cold bowl, cold cream, a cold whisk. You can whip cream by hand, it's pretty easy. But you want to keep I don't know if I can show it to you. You want to put your sugar in. I'm using some texture sugar. I almost forgot that. Um, or super fine. You don't want grainy whipped cream. You want smooth whipped cream. So use either some texture or super fine. Cold bowl, cold whisk, cold cream. Keep the fat cold in the cream and it's the fat that's going to trap the air and give you light, fluffy whipped cream. Yeah, put a little in with that, as you can see, see it, it's already turning into what it's going. pretty quick. Happens pretty quick. Happens in about a minute. You're a pro, Maria. Very easy to do. Yeah. And we have whipped cream. Incredible. Okay, I have whipped cream all over. So, so Ree, while that's like very doable, as people just saw at home, I see that red canister of whipped topping from Ready Whip, which I happen to have my favorites from Ready Whip too. So I may just reach for this to save a minute or two, if that's all right. Absolutely. It's delicious. Of all course, right. if you have it in the fridge, you can squirt it on your morning cocoa and you don't need a minute to whip your cream. Of Perfect. course. <laughs> okay. So now we need, before we can build, we need our biscuits. You need a skillet, turn it on. 
put it on medium high heat on the stove while it's heating. Take your biscuits, slice them in half. So you have a top and a bottom, like a burger bun. You're going to butter each half on the sliced side. Be generous. Don't skimp on the butter. <laughs> go right, get right in there. I love butter. Just go right ahead. Now you're going to liberally sprinkle granulated sugar on each of the butter halves. Just get right in there. Make a mess. Have fun. Oh, it's like snow. It's so mm -hmm. Okay, we need to grill these. Well, we're gonna grill them butter side down. We're gonna grill them for about a minute. A little more, a little less by just a few seconds. It'll take about a minute. The butter's gonna melt and make the biscuit all golden brown. And the sugar's gonna caramelize and get all nice and crunchy. And when they're done in about a minute, they're gonna look like this. Boop. Flying biscuits. They're gonna look like this. So now you're done. You're ready to build. Grab a dish, grab a biscuit, a top and a bottom, grilled side up, place them in the bottom. Ice cream, scoop of ice cream, any flavor. With this, I'm using dark cherry because it's delicious with this, but whatever your favorite is, that's what you use. Oh, I'm getting it all over. Where's my berries? Okay. Hey, Ree, while you're, while you're building that, I know you're a dark cherry ice cream fan, but uh, we may throw a poll up on the screen uh, in, a, in a minute or so and see what your favorite ice cream is. So once you see oh, that okay. pop up, everybody, let us know. Load it. Load it with berries. Just absolutely load it with the berries. Where's my cream? Where's my cream? I use Rachel's garbage bowl as my dirty bowl. Top it with whipped cream. And excuse my fingers, maybe put a pretty berry on. Serve and eat. Maria, looks like cookies and cream snuck away with the win on the uh, ice cream pole here. It really is good. It's fast, it's good. Again, you just need the 15 minutes for the fruit, but if you have room after that barbecue, take a nap, you know, an hour later. Amazing. Maria, okay. thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you so much. We hope to see you back in the kitchen for another day of camp. Stay safe and stay healthy, everybody. Thank you.